This TikTok superstar, Keith Lee, has destroyed yet another business. One single TikTok becomes the center of attention and leads to the ultimate downfall of a company known as Sweetly Seasoned. These unexpected consequences all revolve around the renowned Keith Lee and his acts of generosity towards small businesses. Now, the initial reaction from one of the owners, known as Trey, made it seem like everything was in such good spirits and everyone was having a lively time. Of course, you'd be excited at the fact that Keith Lee is coming to visit your food business extravaganza. It even has people doing braids outside. Look what the freak happened yesterday! Please here. He is trying to you are. He is visiting my mom's food Oh. And you're probably thinking, how how could any of this turn sour? He looks so happy. Everyone looks so happy. Was the food bad? Was was the customer service horrible? Well, join me on a journey to uncover the truth as to what happened at Sweetly Seasoned. Sister laid her hand. Everybody laid their hand. Ronnie, everybody. I was such a real genius. They even laid hands on each other to do a prayer together. I really couldn't foresee how this could have taken the worst turn. I really thought it would have been sunshine and rainbows. The Keith Lee effect is real out there. I, I really don't expect anyone to be squandering their blessings like we're about to see here. Nobody out there can take that away from you. I truly believe everything happens for a reason. Yesterday, not only did Keith Lee come and help turn my mom's food truck around where now I can go and I can follow my dreams and I can live my life, but Keith Lee is my idol. As a black man on TikTok, he is the holy grail. This picture getting framed. This going, this going on the food truck. He's going in the restaurant. Wherever we going to be at, this, gonna, this picture going to follow. It says eight hey, Sherelle's even in the house to help us out, y'all. Thank you so much, Sherelle. See, this is where I have to pause it and point out that one of the people here, Sherelle, has a real story to tell about the events of this day. But first, let's take a look at Keith Lee's review. And if you don't know, Keith Lee is known for his food reviews and his kindness towards struggling businesses. He's even built a massive career in transforming multiple small businesses into thriving ventures. So when Keith Lee arrives, it's definitely something that is like a blessing from the heavens. Let's take a look at Keith Lee's review because is it the food that turned this event upside down? Let's take a look. So I asked him for help and come to visit my mom's food truck, hopefully turn it around. She is an award-winning pastry chef. She is a culinary chef. She has two degrees. We are just from Milwaukee and here in Dallas. It's kind of hard with the marketing because we don't know our way even around yet. Well, we here. I got it. Let's try it and rate it one to 10. He spent $80 and 11 cents. We are in North Dallas, Texas. We in a hood. I'm not going to say it no other way. We in a hood. They outside cutting hair, doing braids waiting on us. They both on live at the same time, him and his sister, but they outside ready. So we had to be double O this whole time. I'm talking about double O seven agents. It's a party out here. The custom service, my family said was pretty good and it was alive the whole time. So we can kind of see it. Only thing is only person cooking is the mama. So if you do come, please be patient. It's only one person there cooking, but it's a lot of people. So she got the option to have a lot of hands. I'm gonna show you everything I got and we gonna try it and ready with the team. A pulled pork sandwich, fried ribs with French fries, jerk chicken tacos with beans and rice. That food is looking pretty tasty. I can't see what the problem is here. It's just really good seasoned pulled pork with pickles and barbecue sauce would take this over the top. But as it is, I'm not mad at that. It's nothing crazy. 7.8 out of 10. That's pretty high for fresh. a sandwich to come out. It's real fresh. This is chicken fried. Maybe you can see it better on this one. Whoa, 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 wait. Chicken fried, deep fried pork ribs. Oh, we don't have that kind of stuff over here in the UK. We have too many food regulations, but that sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. I don't know where she got these ribs from. Look how much meat is on that rib. In my opinion, I would take a lot of the sauce off because they don't need it. The rib by itself is very flavorful. It's crispy. It's meaty. The ribs with the sauce as is, I'm going to go with 7 out of 10. But I feel like if she take this sauce off, this can be an eight and a half. So I'm here in high school so far. I'm here and this is, it seems like it's going in a pretty good direction. What could go wrong? One of the main things I will say, in my opinion, the marketing does need a lot of help. There's no menu on the brother's page, on the sister's page, or the mom's page. I feel like a menu with prices should definitely be top priority. That and a website change, in my opinion. I appreciate the invite. And mama, 
you might need some more hands back there. No promises. It might get a little crazy. Everything seemed in good spirits. We got 8.7s, 7s. We got really high scores. We got some good advice. We got some marketing advice. Now, it's this part of the review where things start to take a turn for the worse. Not on Keith's part, but what happens afterwards. Before we left, we went and had a conversation with the mom and we thanked everybody for having us. Me and the mama prayed together and we left a $4,000 tip behind. God, it's amazing. I appreciate y'all for having us. I see y'all giving out haircuts and doing braids. So we want to leave a thousand dollars to the barber. So we can cut everybody here. Wow, so a $4,000 tip plus $1,000 left for the hairdresser who was also doing braids by the side so they could cut hair for free. That sounds pretty good. This sounds pretty nice. But this led to a lot of social media backlash. A video surfaces accusing Keith Lee of misleading intentions, leading to a social media feud and widespread confusion. Here's that downfall explained by the lady in that picture. What Trey said, he wanted framed, actually. So this is one of the employees talking about the subsequent fallout. I'll hand it over. I bet you're wondering how we got here. Well, let me tell you. So a lot of y'all know yesterday I got to meet Keith Lee. Great. Congratulations. I'm still humbled by the experience. Like, I am ecstatic. Blessings to your family. I really appreciate you. But now this is where the downfall comes in. A lot of y'all was on my live when he said this. I see y'all giving out haircuts. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> little brother. Yeah. yeah. He wants to leave $1,000 to the barber so he can cut he, everybody. Oh, that's my little brother. He wants to go pick up my baby brother from yeah. school. We want to leave you $1,000 to do it. And granted, everything was cool, right? Me being me and thinking everybody else is going to have the same genuine heart as me, I charged him $4,000 on his car, meaning all the money went to the food truck in hopes that she would do what she needed to do, right? Wrong. So after everything had died down, mind you, on top of him tipping $4,000. Oh no. Here we have Sherelle directly accusing the food truck of harboring all of the money that was also supposed to be split to the hairdresser who was doing haircuts on that day. I'm in the truck, mind you, I'm a worker. This is your business, so I'm doing what you say. She tell me after this person, which is the third person, that you gotta start charging again. Hmm? Now, it's one thing when he say I'm leaving this for free and for somebody to come and order like one of everything on the menu and try to get both desserts and drinks and shit. Like, yeah, you can put a limit on that. But if this man left you almost a thousand dollars, why the fuck did you stop handing free food out after the third person? Hmm? Make it make sense. So, all right, everything was cool. It was time to close down. You know, my friend done ran to the store. He helping his mom. He coming out of his pocket with his own money. And I look. So, not only is Sherelle saying that the owner of the food van, the mother, harbored the money from the haircut, but also for the free meals that Keith Lee gave extra money for her to deliver to some customers. I just want to let you know it'll be about a day or two before you guys get your money. I work with Square. I've been running my business for the past four years with Square, so I know exactly how it works. But if you've been running this business for years, your money gonna clear the next day, correct? So this morning we got up. Mind you, I'm thinking I gotta go back to help her because yesterday you ain't have nobody that wanted to work for you. You get what I'm saying? So my friend had me come and help you, and then my brother was really only out there, but you somehow trying to make it seem like my brother was giving free haircuts when he was posting flyers with his pr prices on them. Come on. So then I wake up today. People hit me up talking about, we want to make your menus. We want to make your flyers. Da, 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 da. My main thing was, I'm not the face of this company. You get what I'm saying? I'm not the face of this company, but I can put you in contact. If you go through my comment section, you will definitely see where I'm tagging her business over and over and over because people thought it was my shit. So I hit her this morning was like, Kim, you have workers today? Also, there's a guy who's wanted to do your menu and flyers for you, so I'm sending him your number. Who is this? Sherelle. Yes, I have workers for today, and you can send me his info. Thank you. That was it. So I respond back. I will send you his Instagram, and did you see if your money cleared? You can keep the money that was left for me, but my brother is preparing to leave and go back home, and I'm unsure how he'll get it once he leaves. Granted, all I had to do was send it to her, or she could have sent it to him, whatever. She said, please call me back so an agreement can be made. But before we even got to those messages, she called me and she was just like, well, I didn't invite your brother to come out there and cut hair. I didn't invite you. My son invited you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a thousand dollars to my son and he'll give y'all whatever it is he see fit out of there. 
Hold on, man. Now we see where the contention starts. The owner of the restaurant, the owner of the Sweetly Seasoned, didn't believe that the hairdresser should even be there. And the hairdresser appears to be the brother of Sherelle here. It's all, it's all building up into this massive drama, this massive saga, where there's people firing off statements left, right, left, right, left, right. But we're going to condense it all into one video just for you guys. So keep watching. Honey, but I was more so pressed about the issue of my brother. Keith Lee don't know my brother. My brother don't know Keith Lee. My brother don't know any of y'all out here. But when you gave him the green light to post his flyers after he cut both of your son's head, yes, they paid. He wasn't cutting nobody's hair for free. Who the fuck put that out there? If you cut it here for free, why are you posting flyers with prices? You get what I'm saying? There's a girl on Facebook, hold on, whom I'm assuming is her oldest son's wife, fiance, whoever she is. This is all lies, just like the free cuts were. Because people had to pay. Of course they had to pay. The two people here that he cut was both of the owner's sons. So why the fuck would he be giving the owner's sons whose mom is getting visited by Keith Lee free cuts? Keith Lee probably was under the assumption, hell yeah, he didn't even say it. Let's be honest. Keith Lee didn't even say, oh, I'm giving you $1,000 because. He said, I'm giving you $1,000 so you can go and get free haircuts. But bitch, we couldn't even make it out there to get free haircuts because you tripping over $2,000. And you gonna sit there and have a nerve to tell me, Keith Lee don't understand. Y'all not even a part of the brand. So I don't feel inclined to give you the money. Bitch, fuck you. The sole purpose of this was so you could get the exposure. You get what I'm saying? You wanted the Keith Lee effect. And we did our part to make sure that could happen. And I can't even say to make sure. To, 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 to kind of hope and pray that it would happen, and it did. I wanted to leave you $1,000 for doing braids. Wanted to leave $1,000 to the barber so he can cut everybody's hair for free. By the time Keith Lee left, your motherfucking ass closed the shop down. So the goal was for him to return today, right? But you look my brother dead in his eyes last night when he came to spend money at your establishment and told him, you missed your blessing. But I got the money that Keith Lee gave you. I'm going to give it to you when my money clears. But today you wake up and you sing in a different tune. Oh boy, oh boy, did Sherelle stay true to her words in her mission. This is where everything started to spiral into a form of chaos. And the business became Sweetly Seasoned No More. Here is the owner of Sweetly Seasoned's response to Sherelle. I'll just let this play by itself and you can hear what she has to say. Sherelle. And ask her if she can come get it for money. From what I hear, she is refusing to get it. So now I am asking and um, asking my followers, please tag her and ask, tell her Sweetie Season is asking her to please come pick up their money. And after all of this, Keith Lee responded once again with his input to this whole entire drama. Wow, it really is an epic saga that keeps unfolding. What was going on? Three days ago, me and my family went to Sweetly Season Food Truck. Number one, nobody had any idea we was coming. They found out we was in Dallas like everybody else found out we was in Dallas because we was posting videos in Dallas. So in hopes of us coming, they had t-shirts made and they was on live all day. So me and my family went in cahoots with none of this. We was all under the impression that they were a team and this was a normal routine for them. The barber being there, the braider being there, family being there, a lot of people being there. This is our first time here. We are customers. We have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. Number two, I was never under the impression that haircuts was free. Again, my family was watching the lives. We knew that he was cutting hair for $40. So when we walked up and I said, I want to get $1,000 to the barber to do free haircuts and $1,000 to the braider to braid hair, it was because in the original video, the son said it was slow due to marketing. That's marketing. God willing, after we post a video, there will be a line out the door. If there's a line out the door and there's a barber and a braider doing hair while people are waiting, that's marketing. So again, it's in a hood. You play some music, you cutting hair, you braiding hair, y'all all sitting out, y'all having fun. It's a parking lot barbecue. So again, we don't know the behind the scenes if they knew each other, if they didn't know each other. And the reason why I didn't pay everybody individually, the interaction that you see looked longer than what it was. It was really only like a five minute interaction. Within that five minutes, 30 to 40 people pulled up. They was pulling up in droves. That parking lot was getting deep, fast. And for me and my family's safety in general, I don't ever carry cash around. And nine times out of 10, if we tip, we always do it through the POS system. And even if we wanted to do it a different way, Zelle and Apple Pay wasn't an option because it was four or five people at the same time on live. So for safety reasons, they wouldn't be able to say their phone numbers or their personal information out loud. And as far as them taking my phone and putting their number in on Zelle themselves, I wouldn't handle my personal phone to nobody. 
So the POS system was the option that made the most sense. I've learned through this journey that sometimes it's deeper than the food, it's deeper than the marketing, it's deeper than the customer service. And this is one of those cases, in my opinion. Sweetly season got a lot to figure out, and I thank God in advance that they do figure it out. The last thing I'm going to touch on is the sun is misconstruing something that I said, and I don't appreciate it. After I said out loud in detail what we deemed the money to be used towards, I also said y'all can divvy it out how y'all feel necessary. Meaning, after the money hits, because it's a POS system, it don't hit the same day. Y'all can send it out through Apple Pay, through Zelle, through Cash App, through Check, through Cash. However, y'all feel necessary to spread it amongst the team. I thought and I still think that that's a very clear statement. But it's being misconstrued, in my opinion, intentionally misconstrued, that I said and the mom and the son can say who get the money and who don't get the money. And now to have Keith Lee bring clarity onto this whole situation and to what he meant by when he said divvy up how you feel necessary and hand it out to the team, it all makes sense. But did this stop here? No, it did not. Let me address this situation and let me tell y'all the truth, unbiased of what's really going on. Basically, somebody wants clout and they want their name involved in this situation so bad that they are telling lies in order to gain attention and followers. Notice that all of their videos mentioning Keith Lee, whether positive or negative, are the only ones on their page that are over 100,000 views. Check out mine. That's not the case. I do not have to use Keith Lee to exploit for views. I would never do that to him. The fact that somebody I call my friend is doing that is making me sick to my stomach, and that's why I was not trying to make a video to address it. Like I told Sherelle, let's handle it privately. However y'all want to do, we can email Keith Lee, we can talk to him, we can figure it out. But this internet stuff ain't no point for that. That's just for views and money and clicks. Like This guy literally has the gospel music in the background. It's like he's just trying to manipulate us. Oh my days. We don't need to do that. The issue was, listen to the words that Keith Lee said in this video. Oh, we want to leave a thousand dollars to Harvard because we think that everybody ever him say he wanted to give a thousand dollars to the barber to cut everybody's hair for free. But when it came time for that to happen, the barber said he could not make it. He cut one head for free that day, and that was before Keith Lee even got there. Everybody else. He got paid for. He pulled up to the event because he knew Keith Lee was going to be there because we got a call the day before saying he was. But after the excitement wore down and we watched the videos, it was like, oh, he said to cut here for free. So that's when I asked Sherelle, could her brother come to the food truck to cut the hair for free? She said, no, he has to leave, but he wants his money before he leaves. But you didn't do what Keith Lee asked. So why do you want the money? We have to now find a whole nother barber and pay them to cut the hair. But your brother still want his money and y'all know we're struggling. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to lose a friend over $1,000. It's not worth it. They really need this money so bad. So I said, I, out of my bank account, I will pay the $1,000 out of Keith Lee's money. The thousand dollars will go towards another barber who can actually come and cut hair because he couldn't. And now you're trying to slander my mom's business and the brand that I have worked so hard for over these days. It's really, it's jealousy. It's evil. He almost seems to make it make a little bit more sense from the sweetly seasoned food truck perspective. The hairdresser didn't cut anyone's hair for free. Yadi da da, yadi da da. But let's transition more onto the owner's perspective, the mother's perspective, the owner of Sweetly Seasoned. Let's see what she has to say to expand upon all of this and hopefully bring even more clarity to this situation. Give that barber a thousand dollars for free haircuts. He should have said, "Anybody, come on, who wants their haircut for free? Come on." Then he would have deserved it. Then that would have made him with me. Because now you're helping me. You're shining on me. This man was not with me. You were supposed to be out there to support Sweetly Season, a struggling business. And then you turn around and make it seem like it was something that it wasn't. I don't think I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, I want Keith Lee to tell me. After him knowing the truth now, if that man tell me to give them the money, I'll give it to him. And just to let y'all know, she's a scammer. First of all, I want to say I'm not a scammer. And I'm not a thief. While Sherelle was there, and I don't know her that well. I don't know her that well. The only reason why she was there 
is because my son asked her to be there, I guess. I don't know. And then she said that she wanted to meet Keith Lee, so she just wanted to be there. And they were marketing me, trying to get him out there to see me. So I still want to thank her for doing that. And yes, she do deserve to be compensated for that. But she will not even talk to me about that. My son called this guy. I guess that's her brother. I didn't know him, never seen him, to come cut his hair. And he came out there to cut his hair. I see a girl running and Sherelle running. They can hug. And I'm like, who, you know, who is that? Come find out she was supposed to have been braiding no girl hair. But she told her to come out there because she didn't want to miss Keith Lee. So when Keith Lee did arrive, it looked as if they were with me. And I built this business from the ground up. Me and my son. And for her to even think because she called somebody out there just to braid her hair that she deserved a thousand dollars and try to make it seem like now I could see when Keith Lee said give that barber a thousand dollars for free haircuts he should have said anybody come on who wants their haircut for free right thing so here we can see that the owner of Sweetly Seasoned is actually trying to make it out that Sherelle wasn't even part of the team and that she didn't even know her that well which is very interesting because because here we have Sherelle with the receipts and the rebuttal where there is actually proof that Sherelle was part of the team and she was invited. Please, come on, talk. <laughs> There you go, there's the proof that not only was she there when they found out that Keith Lee was going to arrive, so here it proves that the brother lied, directly lied about receiving a call that Keith Lee was going to pull up. No, that is actually the first interaction that they had with Keith Lee, uh, where Keith Lee was going to be pulling up. It's crazy the social media age that we live in, honestly. Here we have more proof that she was invited and she was part of the crew. That Keith Lee was on his way out here, you couldn't even think straight. But you didn't want me out here, why are you sending me your mom's logo to see if I can chop it up on a t-shirt? Hold on real quick. Y'all see this? Do y'all see this right here? So if I was not invited, why am I making t-shirts to come? Listen to me, I've never been the person to try to push myself onto bombs in any, any, my bad. So in the midst of the conversation, I told you that I would come and help you and I would be the cashier. If I was never supposed to be there, if I was never supposed to be in the presence and I only wanted to see Keith Lee, why on God's green earth am I in the food truck helping? Why am I out there promoting on live the entire time? But let's take it back because you forgot you text me. You said if you got a basketball, bring it. It's courts right there we can play on when we need a break. What did I say to you? I don't have a ball. Then the next morning after I said that, I said, wake up. My little brother can't come. You said, damn. I said, my middle brother is here. You said they got to have experience or they going to drown. It takes a minute to get the hang of things. You got to remember the timers and all of that. I only know a few people who have worked fast food, but you never invited me. You never wanted my brother to come out there and drop fries. You wanted my 18-year-old brother to miss school so that your motherfucking mama could have the help that she needed. I said, I don't know. I'm going to help out in all the areas I can. Hopefully, you find someone. Then I said I was on the way. 
He said, okay. I said, you up? Dress? We have work to do. He said, I'm ready. There's a lot of receipts here. And to me, this is enough evidence to prove that one, she was invited. Two, she's part of the crew. And three, that she's actually been supportive and helping the business the whole entire time. And it's really sad to see that the way that it was all spun by the owners of Sweetly Season on poor Sherelle here. Erica, she played with. But when you brought that shit to my house, you brought that shit to my land, my front porch. That's why I had a problem with it. You looked me dead in my face and said, if you go and make a video, this shit gonna fall back on me. If you go and make a video, this shit gonna tarnish me. If you go and make a video, everything was pointing me to the ultimatum of choose your brother or choose my platform. And by golly with the, ooh shit, I'm getting pissed the fuck off. I would never in a million years choose your motherfucking platform when your platform was built off of me. You do understand that, right? You do understand that, right? I done built three pages from the ground up organically. I made millions of followers organically and you stuck at 200,000 and you telling me that, come on, bro, come on. You want to do it? We about to do it. Watch this. And it seemed like the game was on and it didn't show any signs of letting up. And this drama, it really just kept expanding. But all the videos I kept watching on it, they just they just ended it there. And I was just so confused about who was who and who said what and why it was even a problem. But now I'm really starting to understand the, the levels of why Sherelle is so annoyed at this food truck. Here is Sherelle's response to Keith Lee's response. There is some light at the end of this tunnel, believe me. But there are a few conflated and confused things that's going around about the situation. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I did a stitch because I do not want to be paid for this. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? I interacted with that man. The conversation was longer than what y'all seen, but I know what he said to me. Keith Lee, I want to say thank you. I'm officially off this conversation. I'm not deleting any videos. I'm not taking back anything that I said. This friendship is officially over. Sweetly season, I wish you nothing but the best. I hope that your fan base grows, but just at your, at your own pace, off your own back. Appreciate you, Keith Lee. I enjoyed your family. Y'all be safe. I'm out. Where you think? That's the ending of it all. It really isn't, because unfortunately, all of this drama actually backfired on another sweetly seasoned food truck that was in Dallas. There was a flood of negative reviews that actually came flooding into this other sweetly seasoned food truck, meaning that Sherelle was the one that actually went and dealt with it. Keith Lee, sweetly seasoned food truck re- Hey, how are you? My name is Sherelle. First, I want to say I am deeply sorry for the negative reviews and the negative phone calls that you and your husband have been receiving. I actually reached out to your husband to apologize to him and let him know like the discrepancies that was going on. And I told him that I wanted to correct it. So me and my platform, we're going to come down and we're going to enjoy the festivities that you guys have today. We're going to go live, whatever gifts, whatever is donated to the live. Once we get off and we see, you know, whatever is what, I'm going to donate it to you guys. Um, I'm sorry. I never wanted this to happen. I'm honestly just now finding out about you guys, but I live in Dallas and it's only right that I come down and I do my best to make it right. Please forgive me and please forgive the ignorance that is floating around out there. We'll be out there to support your business a lot later and I can't wait to meet you. I hope you have a better day. Bye. Whilst Sherelle here is trying to, you know, tie up loose ends and fix things with this other Sweetly Seasoned, which is in Dallas, what is Trey doing at this point? I wonder. Hey, yo, I want to start this video off by apologizing to Keith Lee. He is someone that I looked up to for so long. I would never intentionally flip his words to work in my favor. I genuinely thought when he left the money for free haircuts that it was for free haircuts, not just to give to the barber. So... I can accept as a man that I was loud and wrong, and I apologize. Once Keith Lee made his response video, my mom immediately sent the money to the barber that was originally there. I also reached out off camera to provide a sincere apology. So since now we all got a clear understanding of what Keith Lee wanted, we are taking the initiative to do what's right. This Friday, February 9th, between 1 and 5 p.m., we will be hosting a family and fun community event we have reached out to a master barber here in Dallas who will be providing quality haircuts as well as we will be giving out meals to the first 20 customers in line as well as free fried rib samples for everyone to try. As we take the step to make things right, 
I only have one request. Can you guys please stop with the threatening phone calls and harassing at my mom's home and place of business? Her address has been leaked and just nobody deserves that. Everybody makes mistakes. I humbly and graciously thank you all for a second chance to make things right. Um, I hope to see you all at the event. If there's anything else that we can do to make things right, please feel free to let me know. I'm committed to earning the trust of the community again. So I talked to a lot of people over the last few days. Everybody been giving me the same advice. Don't say nothing. Don't defend yourself. Just let people talk. Let them say what they want. So I've been taking everybody's advice and being quiet. And look where I end up. I told Chef Brian when I talked to him, I said, I'm going to try it your way. But if it does not work, I'm doing it mine. At this point, I'm not defending my mother no more. I'm not defending her actions. She was wrong. I told her she was wrong. But at the end of the day, when it's the world against my mama, I'm going to choose my mama every time. If you ain't going to choose your mama, then I don't know who in the world you're going to choose. But at this point, I got to defend myself. This girl is going around and stating that I have HIV and that she knows I have HIV all because I'm a gay black man. I don't have HIV. I promise you, I assure you, I do not have HIV. The fact that I have to go get tested on camera to prove it to people, that's disgusting. This narrative, this stigma, it's got to stop. Go lie. Issa came to my house and said, go lie. Okay. You're a liar. Lie, lie. Go watch it. Go watch it. She's I'm you a liar when I prove I don't have HIV. I'm gonna prove you a liar. Okay. That means you're gonna prove yeah. yourself liar. You the one got HIV, not me. Disgusting. When did you? When did you? Disgusting. Where I'm gonna get it from? Did I just Where make you it up? From? Yeah, you made it up. Yeah. If I didn't have custody, I'm gonna have to ask for my children, right? Y'all see her. Y'all know her kids have been lying. I'm, I'm, I'm around. You forget. She only have one child there all the time. No, one. you're not. You're not around. Not you don't kid. drive. You barely came to Austin to get. Where did Daddy go? Yeah, to see what Sherelle said there is is a bit out of order, and to see that side of Sherelle, and to see that kind of side of thing, I can see and understand why this spiraled even more, because to insult someone like that, and to make an accusation like that, and to really, you know, tarnish their character like that, I, I mean, anyone else would be just as mad. But after all this died down, Sherelle decided to take a visit to Sweetly Seasoned in Dallas, the other one, not the one that all this drama is about and actually try to make amends there and whether this is for farming for clout or trying to keep the social media engagements up I don't even know at this point I really can't tell because well, this whole thing seems like a crazy social media fantasia fast it's difficult to piece together every detail of the story and every minor discretion and to really understand what these human beings are like through the screen. So that's why I'm letting you guys make up your own decision here. So a lot of y'all know I had an incident with another food truck and things just went left and a lot of people started to leave reviews in my defense to try and like factor out the good and the wrong, whatever. So this company called Seasoned Street Food was accidentally caught in the crossfire. A lot of people went looking for the other company and landed on this one and took their five-star rating down to a three-star rating. And it actually made the Dallas Morning News. I've been tagged in it and I'm like, yo, this is like my fault, you know? And not my fault, like, dang, I shouldn't have said nothing. Like, it was my fault because when I said something, you know, a lot of people trying to defend me, they ended up going in the wrong direction. So I took it upon myself and I said, book it. We're going to get dressed, we're going to go down there, and we're going to have fun, and we're going to enjoy them. But before we did that, I reached out to the owner of the company. I talked to him. His name is Jonathan. He's so sweet. His wife is so sweet. That's them up there. And I let him know, like, hey, I sincerely apologize. I did not expect this to happen. I've never even heard of you guys, but I want to do my part and make it right. Me and my platform, we're going to come down there, and we're going to support you. He was just like, you don't have to do that. Like, it's not your fault. Like, they were very, 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 like, you don't have to do that. So outside of all of that, I told him I was going to pull up. So we pulled up to the spot, you know. I go live. They coming out. They bringing us food. We trying everything, sampling. They cooking. Dough. He springs up on me like, whoever you bring out or whatever this turns out to be, I just want you to know that all the food is free. Like, y'all going to come here. Y'all going to eat. Y'all going to laugh. Y'all going to party. Y'all going to drink. All of that for free. So I went on the platform and you guys showed y'all motherfucking tell. Y'all helped me raise. 39 25 56 on cash app disregard this right here this was after the fact because they told me i can go give me something to drink whatever on the live gifts y'all raised 145 dollars y'all raised x amount of dollars on venmo and then there was some people there in person tipping in cash 
So with that being said, I want to say thank you guys for standing beside me, standing behind me while I went out into the street and we corrected this. As we can see there, Sherelle actually went back to rectify all of the drama and all of the harassment that was caused by all of this situation with the Sweetly Seasoned truck to actually go to the seasoned street food in Dallas to pay their homage and respects and their apologies for all of that drama brought upon them by Sherelle's online antics which is actually a really good thing to do. And I love that she's actually turned it all around for something positive. So here's the evidence of that day. Let me know if I'm meant to do this or if I should just pack it up and go home. You guys tell me. And if you show me the love and you take me out of the three and a half stars that some of you, nah, I'm not gonna point fingers, but I was at five stars yesterday and overnight I went from five stars to three stars. And how are you gonna get fired on your day off? I don't know, I wasn't even open. I mean, how does that happen? Only in the movies does something like this happen. But you know what, here we are, I'm not bitter. Y'all show me some love. Y'all can bring me out. You put me in there, you can pull me out. Period. I just need I just need the y'all to come out in the forwards. All right. They're about to taste it too. And that's behind plastic. Imagine when you see it, maybe it's like in person. And when you taste it, imagine it tastes Carnitas. Ooh. About to eat like royalty out here. Thank you for coming off. All right. It's good, okay? It looks good. Y'all need to come on out. Yeah. And there you go. To end this whole video on, on a light note, at least all of this was transferred and transformed into blessings for another business and I feel like everyone can hopefully ease off and cool out and chill out and maybe even Keith Lee can attend this business and review this business. To see Sherelle take the time out of her day to honorably go over to that business even though she actually didn't have to is actually a really good thing. So on that note, I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you guys for watching. My name's been Murray Zani and I will see you in the next one. Peace.